Hello, it's Martin checking in from Birchinger Green Services with my Mini Electric on a very fresh UK day. I thought I would take this opportunity of the cold weather to test out how the Mini handles the severe weather, at least by UK standards, because of course electric cars have the reputation of not doing quite well in the cold. But so far I've been driving the Mini throughout the winter and it has been quite consistent. But what does consistent mean in terms of numbers? How much range do you sacrifice when the temperatures drop and you still want to stay comfortable in the cabin? So let me explain the testing procedure. Obviously this is going to be in real world conditions, so there's going to be a little bit of variability, but I will try to be as consistent as possible. I just finished charging on these brand new Apple Green chargers. Didn't quite have the patience to wait to 100%, but now I'm at 98%, 97.8 to be exact, according to the OBD data. And because of the drop charging session, the battery is nice and warmed up at 28 degrees Celsius. That means I'm ready to depart. I've got a route set up in the SatNav system, taking me up and down the M11. This is all done to minimize the effects of wind on the consumption and the final efficiency and range data, because obviously if I get headwind on the way up, I will get tailwind on the way back. I'm afraid this is, again, as I said, the best I can do in these real world conditions. Also, heating will be set to 20 degrees in automatic on the second notch or aggressiveness or whatever you want to call it. There's always a little bit of traffic getting out of these services because they're doing some road works at the moment. This is my long-term economy, 3.7 miles per kilowatt hour, very low speeds because I mostly drive around London. And now that I'm about to get onto the slip road, let's officially reset all the values. 97% in the battery, exactly according to the OBD as well. I'm driving in the mid mode, which is the default mode where you've got full performance and full comfort of the vehicle and I have checked with ways to achieve 70 miles per hour of GPS speed, which I will try to stick to. I need to set the cruise control to exactly 72 miles per hour. Now on the M11 and cruise control set to 72. That's it. The ambient temperature is 1.5 degrees Celsius at the moment. It was hovering between 0 and 2 degrees earlier today. So this will be, at least for the UK, probably the worst case scenario. I don't think it's forecast to get much colder. And all I will do is sit here, relax, until we get to the turnaround point, which will be Cambridge Services. It's about a 33 mile trip where I will catch up with you and start heading back. Unfortunately, this is the reality of testing on the UK roads. I don't know why we are doing 15 or 70, there is no reason for it. But these slowdowns are unfortunately quite common. The only way of going around this is driving at midnight, but then you get road closures, so not much of a win either. What I'm hoping for is at least the average speed will somewhat match across all the tests. I'm getting close to the turnaround point, but I will not even be stopping. So let's remove that from the plan. and the sat now should turn me around automatically. So that's Cambridge Services on the left, and we are going to take the Huntingdon exit. And back onto M11 southbound, gently accelerating up to 70 miles per hour again. Perfect. And let me give you an update in terms of the stats. So far, pretty efficient. 3.6 miles per kilowatt hour, which is what I'm used to at these temperatures, and an average speed of about 66 miles per hour. There were a few slowdowns because of traffic, but I'm sure if I repeat this on another day, it will be very similar. So, fingers crossed that we get a valid result. The journey down was definitely smoother, but not without any slowdowns, and now we are in a 60 zone, very close to the services anyways, so let's end the test here. 39% exactly in the battery. The odometer is showing 25,670 miles in just a second. And the important bit, the driving information, the consumption keeps jumping between 3.6 and 3.7 miles per kilowatt hour. And the average speed has been 66.4 miles per hour. So I will make a note of all the numbers and I will see you next time when the weather changes a bit for the run number two. 
about a month has passed. I am back at Birch and Green Services. It's definitely busy, but I didn't have to wait for a charge. It's a distinctly British day, meaning the skies are grey. It's about to start raining, probably, but the roads are still dry. Luckily, even though it's February, the temperature has risen all the way up to about 14 degrees Celsius, so we can use this run to establish a baseline. Just like last time, I am filling up to quite a high state of charge and because I'm so close to being done, I will start preheating the cabin as well. So that's all running. And just for the record, the temperature in the battery is about 31 degrees Celsius. So exactly what we would expect. About to jump onto the motorway. So the values are reset just like before. And off we go. State of charge in the battery is exactly 96%. So I think that's within 1% of what I had last time. It's nice and consistent and let's hope that there isn't too much traffic this time around. I'm doing this a bit later than before. Unfortunately, there is some crosswind. I did check the wind map. That can disrupt the aerodynamics slightly, but I'm afraid that is what it is. 72 locked in on the cruise control and I will just sit here and relax. It was all going so well so far, but I'm afraid there is some traffic ahead. So I had to slow down a bit. The average speed I maintained at about 69 miles per hour. Now it starts dropping because I'm doing 50. So we are down to 67 and a half, but that's what I achieved on the previous run as well. So hopefully when this clears up, it should still be a valid number in the end. Just like before, I'm taking the Huntington exit. Same turnaround point. Still relatively high state of charge in the battery. I don't quite remember how I was doing last time, but I'm certainly quite optimistic on this occasion. Average speed, 67 miles per hour so far, and energy efficiency, 3.7 miles per kilowatt hour. So that's very close to what I achieved in the colder weather. Now, Yes, granted the average speed is maybe possibly a little bit higher, but still it's really, really close and there's a lot of variables as discussed. This is not a laboratory test. The other thing to keep in mind is that so far the run has been quite good on the way up, but I see that there's a lot of traffic heading back towards London. So we will see how far we get. Just for the record, 66% in the battery and the mileage is 26093 miles. So I will try my best and update you in a second. Okay, I'm in a proper traffic jam, literally doing less than 20 miles per hour. So we might as well conclude the test here because the numbers ain't changing. Average efficiency now jumped up slightly to 3.8 miles per kilowatt hour, but that's because on the way down, I wasn't quite able to maintain 72 miles per hour on the speedo. And you see average speed 66.3 miles per hour. So that's pretty much exactly what we achieved on the previous run. So I'm quite happy with that being consistent. Battery state of charge at the moment is 51% and the thermometer is still showing 12 and a half degrees Celsius. So yeah, very similar numbers, but I will try to get back to you when it starts raining so I can repeat the same thing for the last time in the rain. By the way, the efficiency now jumped back down to 3.7 miles per kilowatt hour. So yeah, it is probably marginally more efficient at these warmer temperatures, but it's not a massive difference. You know the drill by now. I'm at Birchanker Green Services again. The Tesla chargers have been officially opened and are operational and it's really raining quite badly. So this is the perfect opportunity for the rain range test. I'm just stopping up. The battery is currently at 95%. It's not too busy. So just like before, I will go all the way to full. The battery is nice and happy at 20 degrees Celsius. I do have the heating running to bring the cabin up to temperature and I will make sure all the windows are demisted before I set off. The state of charge in the battery, according to the OBD data, is 98.6%. So just like before, I will turn on automatic wipers. If I need to demiss the windscreen while driving, I will obviously do so. And that will be a realistic test because even though I will keep the comfort level to the same settings, obviously if I can't see outside, that's not safe. And it's often the case that you will get misting up when it's raining heavily. The rain actually is a bit on and off, but the roads are very wet because it was raining overnight. So it should still be a realistic test. We will see how the traffic situation is, but it's a Sunday. So I'm hoping it should be fairly quiet. 
just like before joining the M11 with the board computer data reset and I will sit here for the next 45 minutes or so as you can see we do have puddles of standing water so in this scenario I will try to do my best to drive consistently but manually without the cruise control engaged. By the way, the temperature is 7.5 degrees Celsius and we do have a very slight wind from the east but it's very minor, honestly, it's about as still as it gets for the UK. The traffic was quite bad initially so I was getting quite skeptical about this whole test but it has freed up, I was able to maintain the 72 miles per hour on the speedo and now I'm about to reach the turnaround point, Highland Model 3, nice. The average speed so far has been 67.7 miles per hour, so right on point compared to the previous runs. And back onto the M11 southbound. It will be interesting to see how long I managed to maintain the speed because I saw that on the way up there was a massive traffic jam in the opposite direction but I can tell you the Mini feels very planted even on these wet roads, not bothered at all. I like it. Apple Maps is telling me to take off this exit to avoid all the traffic because of an accident. So let's conclude here and let's look at the data. Average speed about 67 miles per hour, so a tiny bit faster than the previous runs, but well within the margins and efficiency 3.4 miles per kilowatt hour. So just as I honestly expected, the worst out of all the three runs, but we will conclude in depth when I get home. For the sake of completeness, I did one more test to establish a better baseline with a lower wind speed than the second run, with the temperature also being quite warm at 14 degrees Celsius. So it's the same procedure as before, charged up to 96%, drove throughout the night this time around, so the traffic was much lighter, meaning I was able to better maintain the target speed, so I decided to drop the cruise control to 70 miles per hour just to keep it consistent with the average speed of the previous tests. And now you join me in my kitchen to look at the results. I will put up all the data on the screen so you can make your own conclusions, but this is where you will have to keep in mind that it is very much a real world test because you will see that on the last run which I thought would be very efficient the temperature was quite high obviously after the sunset it did drop to about 10 degrees celsius but still quite mild no wind speed the efficiency wasn't that fantastic yes the average speed was a little bit higher compared to the previous runs but here you can just simply see that even small tweaks and differences can have quite a substantial impact on the overall efficiency results so i would treat this more as a qualitative test rather than quantitative because there is no way to describe how many percent of efficiency you lose by driving in different conditions that's something you can really only do in a lab but the big impact and the worst efficiency was definitely in the rain it has nothing to do with the wipers being on there is simply a bit more drag on the vehicle and it's less efficient when you have standing water on the roads in this scenario this particular crosswind didn't have much of an impact and that's the run which got the best efficiency at 3.75 miles per kilowatt hour based on my experience with the mini i can say that the, all of these tests came up with very valid efficiency numbers the worst i ever saw with the mini was about 3.3 miles per kilowatt hour on a motorway run in the middle of winter very cold temperatures and some headwind and the best I ever saw if I managed to get a clean run at 70 miles per hour is about 4 miles per kilowatt hour when the weather is mild and you don't need to use much heating or air conditioning the roads are perfectly dry as well if you are new to EVs what you probably care about is range rather than efficiency so I crunched the numbers and I put down the figures for how much range you can expect from 100% all the way down to zero with obviously the weather conditions and how you drive affecting the total figure it's not as much as some people would like you to believe. Literally an 8 mile difference from the worst result to the best result. By the way, for all of you EV nerds, that was literally calculated based on the percentage used and the mileage covered. If you want to use a different method, you can multiply the efficiency by the total net available energy in the battery pack, which Mini specifies as 28.9 kilowatt hours and you get slightly different results, but you can see the trend is roughly the same. Again, I'm not shocked by this discrepancy. Mini and BMW have been lying about battery capacities in the past, but in a good way, in a sense that you actually get more usable energy than what's officially quoted. But what I would conclude from all of this data is that at least in the UK, for our winters, you can assume 90 miles on a charge, and in the summer, about 100, maybe 110, if the weather is very mild, and you're stuck in a lot of construction zones where your average speed drops a little bit. I think that's a good point to leave it on. 
Important to mention is that all of these numbers only apply to the F56 Mini specifically. Obviously, there is a range of electric cars on the market now and all of them are designed a bit differently. So some of them may be more susceptible to cold weather, some of them may be more susceptible to crosswinds, headwinds, etc. All of these different factors can have different impacts on different vehicles. Why is the Mini so good and so consistent across the board? Firstly, the efficient drivetrain definitely helps for minimum base load consumption. The motor is very efficient, taken over from the BMW i3. Lots of experience with that drivetrain and it's fantastic. The battery chemistry is also very good with good thermal management. And as you can see, it's quite resilient to the cold and it actually doesn't need to run the battery heater unless it's basically below freezing temperatures. And lastly, it does come with the heat pump as standard which again means that even if you want to maintain cabin heating, it doesn't have too much of an impact. Yes, your wind range still is lower than your summer range, but it will not drain too much energy, so you can still stay comfortable. If you want to learn more about living with the Mini in the winter and the cold resilience of it beyond just the range, also when it comes to charging and efficiency, make sure to check out the video linked in the top right hand corner I've done previously. Also, if you want to learn more about heat pumps and heating systems in electric cars, we have done a video at Wisely Automotive about the heat pump in the BMW i3 and this system is quite similar. So again, I will leave that linked in the top right hand corner as well. And I think that's it. Thank you very much for watching. Make sure to hit the like button if you appreciate the effort and the money which has gone into this because charging ain't free anymore. And yeah, see you in the next one.